So I just woke up this morning and I decided I wanted to see my roommate and my best friend Lizzie. And I could hear voices coming from the room, so I thought, who is that? Because we're quarantining, so she shouldn't be seeing anyone else. Oh yes, yes, she just came in the room now. So I asked her, like, who are you talking to? And it turns out she was talking to our best friend, Alan. Without me. Um, it's Alan Barr. As in, our best friend, Alan Barr. It was the greatest betrayal I've ever gone through. That. Why would people do that to another person? Like, they didn't even tell me what was happening. It was as if, like, I wasn't invited at all. I know, right? <laughs> the disrespect I experienced, it was incomparable. It shocked me. Why would people do that to their best friend? Like, it obviously shows me how much our friendship meant to them. keep getting weirder and weirder. After last week though, I'm not playing another game. It's gonna take a good few weeks to convince me to play another game. I had beans on my face. Beans. Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I mean technically it's not my YouTube channel, technically it's Reds on Youth, but whatever. You might be sitting there at home and notice Hey, this is not Brittany's usual corner. I know! We're really mixing it up this week! I'm really wild like that. I'm just crazy. So this week's sad news, Lizzie won't be joining us. We just had a little fallout, like, over our friends. <laughs> just kidding, it was only a skit. Lizzie and I are still friends. But that's okay, because we have the ever so stylish, the Northern Irish, Alan Barr! Hello, everyone. Wow, Alan, tell us, how has isolation been so far? Oh, it's good. Missing you all, though. Right? Right? Am I right? Right? So we've just started a brand new series called Wisdom Literature Life Hacks 101. And in the Bible there's this whole genre called Wisdom Literature. So that's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Book of Job. And all three are trying to make sense of the world we live in. And in this world we live in, what does it mean to actually live the good life? So last week we looked at discipline, everyone's favorite topic, and how discipline leads us closer to the good life because discipline makes us a better version of ourselves and not total useless slobs like I would be if I had no discipline. So before we dig in this week, let's start off in our usual fashion with a question. Question one! So there's this old phrase, some things money can't buy. Do you think that's true? If you do, what are some things that you think money can't buy? Brittany, do you think there's things money can't buy? <laughs> no! Look at all my money! <laughs> Just kidding! Give this video a pause and discuss with your friends, family, whoever you're watching with. So, it was my wedding anniversary on Tuesday. Two years, I know, I know. Running good and strong, and the best is only yet to come for James and I. He's at work right now and I miss him so much. And I love my husband more than anyone. He's the best. And I love being married because that now means I have an anniversary, AKA a new occasion to get presents. So obviously there's my birthday. Then there's my fake birthday because I heard the queen had one and I wanted one too. Christmas, Valentine's, my half birthday, and now my anniversary. And for my anniversary, I wanted nothing more than this really specific jumper. Look, I saw it at the shop. Actually, let's go get it for you. Bear with. <sighs> Look at it, it's amazing. <laughs> Look, so I saw it at the shop, loved it, and instantly wanted it to come home with me. And then I went to the price tag, and I was like, nope, that's not gonna happen. And then I remember I was like, oh yes, our wedding anniversary. So I sent the photo to James, and I kept sending that same photo every single day, just in case he didn't get the subtle hint. But yes, I eventually wore him out. But y'all, when I want something, I want it so bad. This jumper was literally the only thing I could think about. I had dreams about me getting it and like trying it on, pulling it out and wearing it and looking like so fab everywhere I went. I'm like a horse with blinders on. Like when I want something, I want it. I can't help myself. It's all I can think about. And I can't tell you how many times I've had this dialogue in my head. If I just get this, then I'll be so happy. I'll never need to get a new jumper again. My wardrobe will be complete. 
I probably want to go shopping for like six years. Do y'all ever get like this? Okay, maybe it's not a jumper for you. Maybe it's the next video game. Maybe it's like as soon as I get Fortnite. That's all I need. I need Fortnite and I need it now. But then the next video game comes out and Fortnite's old. Or maybe it's like TikTok and just like OMG. When I'm finally old enough to get TikTok, then I'll be actually really happy. Or maybe it's schoolwork. I don't know, whatever it is for you. Do you ever get like this as well? I know I do. <gasps> The knee high boots. <laughs> so there's this pair of knee high boots that I thought I literally needed so bad. Guys, I thought about it. I was like, I, I need these. And then I'd finally be happy. I literally thought in my head, I was like, once I get these, I'm never gonna need shoes ever again. I'll, my, life, my life will be perfect. And then I got the knee high boots. Won't lie, I was happy for like a good few weeks, but then I saw another pair of shoes I wanted and it just all starts all over again. But actually, I need a pair of loafers. I do, I actually need them. Does anyone else ever get like this? And it's this stupid cycle, as if I never learn. I want something, I want it so badly. I start believing this will really and truly make me happy. I get it, I'm happy for like two weeks. Then I want something new so badly, I want it so badly, la 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 la. But perhaps true happiness is a bit bigger than a pair of knee-high boots, eh? Let's read some Bible and let's get some wisdom. So if you have your Bibles here with you, we're gonna be looking at Proverbs 16. If you don't have your Bible quite yet, that's okay. Give this video a wee pause, run and go grab it, and we shall see you in a moment. But if you have your Bible, we're reading Proverbs 16, starting at verse 16 to 24. Oh, I'm not going like a real test you're like how good is she at bible oh see look oh my gosh that was hardly any looking how much better to get wisdom than gold to get insight rather than silver the highway of the upright avoids evil those who guard their ways preserve their lives pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud whoever gives heed to instructions prospers and blessed is the one who trusts in the lord the wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. Ooh, we got some wisdom nuggets in there! How much better is wisdom than gold, insight than silver? Pride comes before destruction, but whoever heeds instructions prospers. Gracious words are like a honeycomb. Come on now! It's good, it's good stuff! The hearts of the wise make their lips prudent. Prudent! This is a word that needs rescuing, isn't it? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the word prudent? I know I think of someone who's like kind of not fun and they're kind of a buzzkill. But the book of Proverbs exalts prudence. Prudence is acting with great care for the future or to show good judgment in avoiding risks or uncertainties for the future. Someone who is prudent, oh, I got a text. Someone who is prudent is sensible, careful, and diligent. Or when I hear that or think of that definition, I instantly think of money. I'm only human, don't judge me. But I always think of like, making wise investments. I always think of that in terms of money, showing great care with how I spend it. And that's part of it. But don't limit prudence to just that. In this verse it says, the hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, but folly brings punishment on fools. They make their mouths prudent. They're careful with their words. They select their words carefully. And what's it say in the following verse? Gracious words are a honeycomb. They're sweet to the soul and healing to bones. So it sounds to me like those who are wise and who are prudent with their words not only select their words carefully, but they carefully use their words to uplift and to be gracious to others. And can we say how undershared kindness is? Like when is the last time someone said something genuinely nice to you? I made a decision in my life a couple years ago that when I have nice thoughts, about someone or something, I'm not just gonna keep them in my brain and keep them to myself. I will go out of my way to share my kind thoughts about others to others. I wanna be someone who's known for bringing up the mood and not down the mood, for making other people feel like rock stars and not making them feel small or little. And I know y'all have met people like this. Have you ever met people who always bring the mood down? They always have something to complain about. They never have something nice to say. They always bring the temperature down. Yeah, that's what this proverb, this is what this verse is telling us not to be like. This proverb is saying, yeah, like, you know, those people be the absolute opposite. If you're going to use your words, use them to be a pillar of hope. Use them for graciousness and to empower others, encourage others, for uplifting others. And that doesn't mean like pretend everything's perfect either. Like every week I have a meeting with my line manager and we talk about everything. We talk about our lives, ministry and life. And of course we talk about our sermons. 
and every week I ask him for some constructive criticism. What did I do well in? What did I do not so well in? How can I grow? Like, how can I become a better youth minister? Now, if he felt like he could only say nice things to me, I would suck at my job. I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't be getting any better. I wouldn't be progressing. I am the product of a lot of constructive criticism and I'm still not that good. <laughs> there's uplifting and empowering others, but there's also being honest and gracious in our criticisms. So the wise are prudent. But let's give you guys another break from my voice and have another question. So question two. After reading this verse, was there any parts that really particularly stood out to you? Any parts that like resonated with your soul or you thought, oh, that's so true or like, oh, I needed to hear that. I'll put this verse back up over my face so you can see it just in case you don't have your Bibles. <laughs> Give this video a pause and discuss with whoever you're watching. For me, moi, ooh, culture. For me, what stood out the most was the very first line. How much better is wisdom than gold to get insight rather than silver? Oh, silver. Wisdom and insight are worth far more than wealth. At the beginning, I asked you guys if there was anything money can't buy, and I'm sure you came up with tons of answers, and ones that are probably better than my answers. But genuinely, money can't buy wisdom or insight. Let's use Donald Trump as an example. Political joke. But perhaps life is bigger, deeper, wider, further reaching, more spiritual than just the pursuit and worship of money and wealth. And there's nothing wrong with wealth. It's the love of money that leads to all kinds of evil. But I think that there's so many people in our world who have this distorted view and this distorted love and obsession with money power position. And I think it all starts at, well, your age, when you're young. So you start believing from a very early age that school matters the most. And school does matter. But in school from a very young age, you get a distorted view on how much your grades are worth and how much school will impact your life. In school, people start caring far too much about their grades. And once again, getting good grades isn't a bad thing. You should strive for excellence in all that you do, but wanting to get good grades in school shouldn't lead you to a place of anxiety, depression, panic attacks and I can't tell you how many students I see a week who are having like mental breakdowns, very real, very big breakdowns because of school. Because they believe if I don't do well in school, uh, then I won't go to a good university and if I don't go to a good university, well then I won't get a good job and if I don't get a good job, then people will, like, will look down on me and I'll, and I'll be poor and I won't have a good life and I watch them honestly have breakdowns over this, people in high school, people in sixth form and I'm like, shh, babes. There's so many paths out there to having a good job and to having a good life. University is a great path, but you might be surprised at how many paths there are in this world. I'm at the age where all my friends who studied for these amazing jobs, and like you, they like put everything into their schooling and they have like mental breakdowns, like very serious mental health issues because of their distorted view of the world. So they studied hard, they got these amazing jobs that they had to have because they'd make really great money and ah. Turns out they hated them. All the money, the pay, it, it wasn't worth the happiness it was robbing from them and it didn't give them the happiness they, they were promised it would. So where are they now? They're retraining for other things that are better suited to them and looking into different career scopes. You are gonna be amazed at the journey that God takes you on. And trust me, the journey is far bigger, deeper, wider, everything than the job you have or, the, or what your salary is. Being wise is far greater than being rich. And being wise is being teachable, listening to instructions, listening to discipline, being prudent, and being kind and generous with the words you say. It's avoiding pride and finding yourselves among the humble. I think if we can get it into the next generation's head, aka you, that the good life isn't about money, wealth, the car you drive, the house you find yourselves in, the brands you wear, how many TikTok followers you have, but the good life is wisdom, closeness to God, and closeness to others. I think we'll have a generation with far less anxiety, depression, and pressure that they put on themselves. And we'd have far more people stepping into the fullness that God has in store for them. This life, it's big, beautiful, it's a wild, crazy adventure. It's deeper, wider, more vast than the things that this world has to offer us. The good life, according to Proverbs, is wisdom, closeness to God, and closeness to others. So I got another question for you guys. It's question three. What are some practical ways you can be gracious with your words and encourage others? Especially right now during coronavirus, how can you encourage others during this very unique time? Give this video a pause, discuss with whoever you're watching with. Well, lovely impact, that's today's session. Thank you so much for coming out. 
I miss you all so much. I can't wait till all this more is over and we can see each other in person again. You guys are constantly in my thoughts and my prayers. And if you ever need anything, just talk, whatever, you can always DM me. We'll see you next week as we continue our Wisdom Life Hacks 101 series. Grace and peace.